The Soweto International Film Festival returns for its sixth edition in collaboration with Stekinoko Cinema and Gauteng Film Commission. Now, the festival's purpose is to highlight and support the talents unique to Gauteng as a city region while also creating opportunities for networking, mentorship and growth within the cinematic arts sector. Good evening, my name is Masa Chaba Kobola and welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we're in conversation with the brains behind the Soweto International Film Festival to find out more about its purpose and what to expect from them over the next three days. Now joining us um, via Zoom is Nambi Tampumluana who is the Saga Executive to tell us more about the festival. Good evening, Nan um, Nambita, welcome to Soweto Today and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Master. But thanks for having us. Look, before we get into it, can you just tell us more about the festival itself and how it came about? So, the Soweto International Film Festival is actually in its sixth year. So, this is not just the beginning of the festival. And I would loathe to say that, uh, you know, it's a new uh, space. But um, it's has been rebranded that uh, Tabello has um, you know brought in a new energy a new team that is just going to elevate things and that's why it is now the international film festival also because it is going across pan africa showcasing talent from all across the continent and abroad um it is happening at uh, state clinical who is our one of our partners and of course that means that we've got actually a really good space they've been very very generous in their sponsorship of, of this festival, which means that, you know, um, projects that normally would not see uh, the big screen actually have that opportunity right now. You know, we have what we call indies, which are the small budget uh, projects. Once they entered into the festival, now they absolutely have this huge platform on which to showcase their work. So it's a great opportunity all around. What are some of the things that um, people can expect from the festival this year and how, how will it be different from the previous years? I think what you can expect is incredible talent being showcased on every screening that is going to come, that's, that's going to come across to you or that you're going to kind of come across. The talent that is being showcased is selected. It is not just... Um, just taking, you know, group group, anybody who wants to come in can come in, but we actually screened and selected out of all the entries, we chose some of the, you know, the ones that are going to be screened. So that on its own means that there is um, integrity, there, there's also a quality being put on our screen. But also there are going to be workshops. Uh, at Saga, which is the South African Guild of Actors, we also we're going to be uh, running some panels and some workshops because we don't just have um, in the in, in in filmmaking you've got your actors, you've got your producers, you've got your directors, you've got all these different um, levels and all these different people and these different players that bring the project together. So when we workshop these people, when we talk about you know the careers in all these different areas. And so at uh, Saga, which is the South African Guild of Actors, we're going to be talking about how to sustain your career as an actor. We're going to talk about casting, what is involved in all of that. Because some people think that, you know, when you don't get a role, it's because somebody took it from you. And nobody can take a blessing from you. It's mm -hmm. either you fit for the role or you're not. So all of those things are going to be broken down. And I think I like the way that they've actually... Dr. John Gunn is also going to be speaking. We've got incredible speakers that are coming through. So it's not just showcasing the work, but it's also growth. It's educational. And I'm hoping that participants and viewers alike will walk away from this experience all the better for it. Now, I'm aware that you have partnered with um, Stechnico Cinema and Gauteng Film Commission. Are there any other key partners yes. and why was it important for these collaborations to happen? I think it's critically important to acknowledge the different players. You know, when we're putting together a film, um, you've got your directors. So that, then we partnered with the Independent Directors Association of Africa because we need their voice to be heard. You've got uh, producers, so the IPO obviously has to be involved. You've got actors, so that means that the PMA has to be involved. Saga has to be involved. All these different players have to come together and hear each other and grow 
with each other. And that's why all these different voices have to be heard. We've got, um, there's a beautiful uh, champagne lady. Well, she's a wine lady, but I love the champagne. <laughs> that's coming. So the different people that are coming together to make this um, a special occasion all around. And that everybody who comes in is going to walk away so much richer for it. Um, I know, having spoken with uh, the, 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 the people at State Clinical, their passion for South African films, they're almost regretting the fact that, you know, a lot of, a lot of our audiences are craving international stuff, as in American movies. So they're hoping that this is going to increase the appetite for locally built films. Now, how are the three days differentiated in terms of the key focuses and the films that will be showcased? Okay, I don't want to pretend to know the entire schedule offhand, but what I do know uh, from the... Um, we've got all the different levels that are coming through. So that means that, you know, from the first day, we're going to screen from this level. And then, of course, we're going to have an overall winner. It is a competition. So um, it's, it's different tiers all around. And of course, the workshops are also split within the three days. Um, I know that with Saga at Saga, we are both on Friday and Saturday. So I'm going to be on Saturday um, chairing or facilitating the panel that is discussing the growth in the industry. So I know that just offhand that each day comes with not just viewing of films, but also with workshops. And of course, on the final day, we're going to hear from the great Don Kani, who is just going to address. I mean, you can't can expect better than that. He's an, an absolute icon in the, in the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, for the interest of time, we'll have to leave it here for now, Ms. Um, Nambita. Thank you for joining us. You know, I am so grateful to you, Ms. Chama, because having switch to tv supporting us in this endeavor means that uh, we're not just imposing this on on the people but we are with the people as we're moving forward and in enriching the entertainment industry and also enriching the south african viewership so thank you very, very much for having us you're welcome now that was <laughs> nambi tam bumlana the soweto international film festival um Sarah executive and actress rather, giving us more insights on the festival. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring in the Writers Guild chairperson, Busa Siwe Ndindili, into the conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Before the break, we started the conversation on the Soweto International Film Festival and got to understand more about what it entails with Saga Executive Nambi Tampumluana. Now joining us in studio now is Writers Guild SA Chairperson Busisiwe Ndindili to help us further unpack the festival um, further. Busisiwe, good evening and welcome to Soweto today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. For the sake of understanding, what exactly is the Writers Guild of South Africa and what is it that you do? So the Writers Guild of South Africa is an organization whose purpose is to protect the rights of writers, um, educate writers about you know contractual issues, about what they should be paid, um, just about different things that writers deal with in the industry as professionals. Um, but then also another aspect of the guild is development and training. So as writers, it's, an long, it's a lifelong um, skill that you have to keep up, up, up keeping. So we do workshops, we do seminars, we invite people from all over the continent and within South Africa to give talks and, and workshops. What role will you be playing in the Soweto International Film Festival this year and what can people expect from you? I'm really, really excited that the Writers Guild of South Africa is involved in this year's festival. And actually, we are kind of taking over the whole of the first day of the festival. So anyone who's interested in writing, if you love stories or if you dream of being a writer, come through on day one of the festival, which is Thursday. Um, we're going to be doing, I'll be facilitating two workshops, one about um, African storytelling and the role of our, using our indigenous African languages and how can we tell our stories in a more authentic way using our own languages. Um, and then the second um, workshop later in the day will be about all about script writing. So if you have questions, if you're not quite sure what is it that script writers do, you'll get to find out all about it. 
I want us to dwell deep into where we are as a country in terms of telling our own stories because we often hear people lamenting our stories being told by people outside of the country. What do we need to do better as a country to actually, especially from a writer's perspective, in order to stand a better chance of telling our own stories um, well? You know, I think for me, I've been writing you know, since the age of five. Uh, I wrote my first play at the age of 13. Um, and then got into the, the TV industry. But it's something I always knew I wanted to do. But one of the biggest things that, which made me go into television to begin with, was when I was growing up, I didn't see people who looked like me on TV. Uh, it was, I grew up in America, I was South African, but my parents were activists, and we went into exile. I grew up in America seeing white kids on TV, not seeing brown and, and, and black kids on TV. And I thought to myself, no, man, I, like, I want to see my own people on television. So for me, it's always been about telling stories about real people um, in real situations. Um, and I've found that you know, in the 20 plus years in the industry, a lot of times, it's not even writers who do this, sometimes it's broadcasters, but there's sometimes a tendency to want to copy what Americans are doing. And I think my biggest advice to South African writers is our stories and our history and our culture is so rich, we don't need to copy anyone. You know, the more we can really tap into what makes us dope, the more that our stories will resonate on a global, on a global scale. Um, so really that is the key, is like, find the thing that is amazing about you or your community and tell that story. What is the importance of actually reading and understanding contracts? Look. Show business has two parts in it, the show and the business. And I think a lot of creative people get caught up in the show part of it and forget that there's a whole side of it that's business. There's people making money off of this thing. And if you're not one of them, that's a problem. Um, and I think we sometimes undervalue creativity. You know, creativity is worth something. It's worth money. And so I think your talent, whether you're an actor, a writer, a director, whatever, um, you have to make sure that you're being valued for what you bring to the table, which is everything. So yeah, we really encourage writers to not just sign contracts without looking at them, um, to also talk to, to each other, because it's easy to get cheated if you don't know what to expect. But the more you talk to other professionals working in the industry, the more you, say, you realize what is the normal rates for things. I want to actually look at our film um, or our stories that we tell. How can we incorporate our cultures and traditions into um, telling our stories more, if you get what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, look, I think it, it's, it's, in this, it's in how we tell stories in our day-to-day -day life. Like, even when I look on social media, like, whether it's Instagram or especially Twitter, but we've, you see how South Africans have this ability. One thing I can say about South Africans is we have an ability to take the worst situation and, and find the humor in it, <laughs> no matter what it is. And that is such a beautiful thing about our spirits. Like that's something that defines us as a people is that we can, we know how to see the bright side of things, you know? Um, and so I see sometimes the funniest things that are, you know, that are coming out, like there's be a funeral and then someone will post the funny side of it or whatever. So I think the more we can tap into that, um, there's gold there. I think there's something there. What makes one a, um, a good writer, according to you? Look, according to me, I mean, there's so many different things. Um, but I think one of the things that I try to teach, like even the writers that I work with in my writer's room, um, is the best, the best thing to be a writer is to observe humans. So you have to be curious about people. Like you have to have interest in people. Um, so I encourage people to like really get outside of their comfort zone. So if you're, you know, if you're kind of, if you have your own taste, you listen to your own kind of music. I know people who say, I only listen to hip hop and I won't listen to anything else mm. but hip hop. You can't be a good writer if you're only going to do one thing. Mm. You know, you have to broaden your horizons. You have to um, expose yourself to different people that you normally wouldn't um, hang out with. Um, so yeah, I think the more, I remember like when, you know, if I was writing a soapy set in the township or whatever, I couldn't be sitting in my bedroom in the suburbs writing a soapy. I had to be in the, on the streets interacting. 
Thank you, Sis Pussy, and thank you for joining us tonight and giving us that invaluable insight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Busisiwe, thank you for joining us tonight. That was Busisiwe Dindili, the chairperson of the Writers Guild South Africa. Let's pack it here for now. Soweto Today returns on the other side of this break with Nuluazi Shange, who is the casting director. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We continue the conversation on the Soweto International Film Festival. And we now bring in the casting director, Nolwazi Shange, to help up conclude the talk. Nolwazi, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I want us to tap into your role as a casting director. Yeah. It's not an easy one. Not at all. What do you look at when you're looking for talent? Um, strong performances, um, for me, that's the first thing. Um, and when I say performance, ish, so there's acting. For me, it's not about acting. It's about being and more about listening, paying attention to what the other performer is saying and responding to that as opposed to waiting for the line to be delivered to you so that you can be able to respond. So it's that, being able to strike that balance. Um, and it's a muscle that you build because it is a doing, just like it's, it's doing, you use your body, you use your emotions. Um, I always urge performers to practice all the time, constantly use the muscle, whether you are recording monologues that you will recite to your friends or share with friends so that you, or you can watch back and just be able to see what does your face do, what does your body do, um, where, because inherently that's what you are using, you're using yourself to tell the story. Um, it's very important to know the decision making process, right? So this brief will be sent out to agents. Um, agents will then maybe match a performer to that brief and make suggestions and then send them to us. The director, the producer, the broadcaster, even myself as a casting director may also have suggestions in terms of which actors we would like to see and then have the first round of auditions. And then after that, we'll also then look, watch the tapes because watching a performance in the room is totally different to watching it on screen. Um, so watch the tapes back and then call the actors back for a call back. Those tapes will then be submitted to the broadcaster who makes the final decision. But throughout the casting process, the directors involved, the producers, the executive producers, the casting directors, as well as there, because that's a person who's going to be working with us daily on set, um, but the final decision is made by the broadcaster. Now the conversation around casting directors and the importance, um, what is it that you'll be looking to have at the festival? And tell us the importance of highlighting the various contributors um, to the film industry. Um, it's very important. We, I think in, when you look at the screen and you look at film, there are a few roles that, you know what I mean, that, that stand out. That could be the person in front of the screen, whether you're a presenter or you're an actor. It could be the director, the writer, the producer. But there are other roles within the industry which are interesting, or maybe you would know you wouldn't ordinarily know about. So, what goes into, for example, wardrobe, the makeup department? What does that entail? Because it's not just painting makeup on someone's face, but there's also the continuity aspect of it. There's the storytelling aspect of it. Does what you are wearing match with your character, or even your makeup, your nails? So, as Nolazi, I might like having long nails but the character does not require that so we need to have a better understanding of what that looks like this lighting department there's the camera department um, there's grips department um, so I think that's very important especially with film schools being expensive as they are um, I know I struggled a lot <laughs> paying for film school you know when I was younger and I can imagine now with the economy being what it is how expensive it is and the unemployment rate being so high. So when opportunities like this come up and you have an opportunity to have um, knowledgeable people in the industry where they are going to be speaking to you, you have opportunities to ask questions, I definitely think it's something that you should leap for. Now going back to the festival, yeah. what do you hope to achieve through your involvement in it and 
what are some of the takeaways that you'd love people to take home from attending the, the, the film festival? Um, I think the most important aspect of the festival is knowledge sharing. Um, and this is <clears throat> amongst ourselves, pardon me, within the industry. This is also for those who are not in the industry as well. There is never a point that you can get to and you believe or think, I know and I have seen it all. There's always room for us to be able to grow. So whether you're a blank canvas that is yearning for knowledge to find out, okay, how can I get my foot in the door? Um, it's a perfect opportunity. But also from us in the industry as well, we have different experiences as we're working and there's plenty of knowledge for us to be able to gain just from each other and engaging with one another. What tips would you give um, or have for people who want to actually break through in the film industry? You know, that's such a tricky, tricky question because our journeys are not the same. Um, but I think, first of all, if you're a performer, look for an agent. Where can I find agents? Google. Google, right? There's so much that you can find online. Um, and it's also not easy for someone to hook you up. It's not a ngila umfage type situation. Um, sometimes you have to audition, you have to interview. In fact, I changed my acting agent um, <clears throat> about a month ago. And <clears throat> I've been in the industry now for nearly 20 years and I had to interview with them, right? So there's no one who could fire me there. You know what I mean? I had to reach out to them, send them my bio because you never stop working, you never stop trying, you never stop developing. So that's why I'm saying like it's a very it's a very humble process where you continue to knock on doors. Um, relationship building is incredibly important, um, but also maintaining those relationships as well. I cannot tell you how small this industry actually is. Respect everyone that you work with, your crew members, greed, like just the smallest thing of just acknowledging another human being is something a person can be, can remember down the line, be kind to one another, like just basic respect for one another in the industry, for the space that you are in is something I think that will contribute to your longevity. So ensure that you are researching and when, when you send um, your CVs out to, to agents, Record something, show them who you are, um, take a picture, make sure it has a clear background, um, that picture, not a selfie, not a picture with your friends, you know what I mean, like just against the wall at home. This, our phones now have great quality cameras, you know what I mean, take a picture, get like, um, what is it, download an, an app, like an, a face editing app or something like that, that you can quickly edit, um, and then send, like put your best foot forward as much as possible to get noticed. So in short, basically, you're repeating the advice that I've once received in the industry is do not burn bridges. Oh, 100%. <laughs> never, ever burn bridges. Um, even if you are walking away from a job, whether it ended well or not, always go back, whether you are sending an email or whatever, thank you so much for the opportunity. I learned A, B, and C, and I believe that what I've learned from this, um, this experience, you know, we will be able to propel me forward in my career. I really appreciate working with you. You know what I mean? And that says a lot about your character, that yes, things might not have ended up well, but you are someone as a business, because it's a business, essentially. So you are someone as a business we can work with and we can grow with. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, that was casting director Anulwazi Shange speaking to us more about the sixth edition of the Soweto International Film Festival director taking place this week. Well, on that note, let's ha that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the episode by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us on 81 5318857 from myself Masa Chaba Kobola and the rest of the team good night and thank you for watching stay with us for your latest news update coming up next